I hope it is live now. Yeah, it seems it's live. Yes, 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 yes it's, it's live. live. Mm. Okay, mm. welcome, Shamim. So Hello. most of you, I, I know, you. I know. I know most of you do not need uh, to know, uh, give, I don't need to give much of uh, what to say. Uh, uh, what is the word now? I am not remembering the word. How to, like, I do not need to introduce him to you because most of us know him in this field who are in working with zoology or uh, in this field of bio, wildlife conservation. So uh, all of you know, and most of you have requested it, me for to uh, have Shamim as one of the guests. So Shamim, thank you so much for giving us the time. So thank you for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, thank you, thank you, Shamim. So uh, sorry of all of you for being uh, late because uh, I don't know there was some problem in my computer. I am looking better in this computer because it is not my computer. I am much brighter. Jo hota hai, se liye hota hai. Jo hota, I look, I look, I am, I am glazing the, in this part. <laughs> I can see. Uh, it's not bad. Okay. So yeah. uh, anyway, so uh, so first of all, Shamim, on the serious note, mm. like uh, since we are going to discuss about fishes, and uh, I know, I, I, my knowledge regarding fishes are like, uh, I know Bengalis are good fish taxonomists, or you can uh, say. Uh, osteologist. I can, uh, in fact, identify fishes bone in my tongue, bone, mouth, oh. <laughs> bone. Okay. Uh, which bone is it? I am eating. So, so, so our okay. our brain, our our uh, tongue know, knows much more fishes than our brain. So, uh, Shamim, tell me brain, okay. a little bit about like uh, why, what made you interested in fishes? Why I'm into this fishes, right? Mm -hmm. So it's audible, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's, uh -huh. it's not something that I have been very much fascinated with the fishes or zoology. That's why I'm into it. There is nothing like that. Very honestly Shami, speaking, I appear for two hundred years. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, ju I'll yeah. just interrupt you. Uh, uh, your uh, mic is hitting something. That is creating is a noise. Now it is okay. Ah, now it is okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm holding it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's in the t-shirt. It might maybe. be there in the uh, t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Tell me. It's better, right? Okay. Yes. Absolutely. So um, as I said, uh, yeah. Okay. There have been nothing like that. I have been very much fascinated with fishes. Or zoology. That's why I'm into this field. Very honestly speaking, I appeared for two entrance examination. One is botany, one is zoology. So I cracked the zoology. That's why I took admission into zoology, right? So okay. uh, mm, it is not a one day uh, outcome or something. It's a cumulative actions of uh, many people who gave me shape in different life stations of my mm. life. So I should mm. mention my alma mater, uh, my zoology mm. department on Bibura College. Mm. Uh, well, um, so when I entered in the zoology major, right? So it's mm. happened uh, like I feel like I, I am in love with the fishes or the zoology. Mm. Okay, mm. it happened. It happened with the, the college going teenagers, right? When they entered into mm. college, uh, <laughs> the young stages. So the mm. getting a phone number from a girl or getting a mm. high messages from a girl at mm. night, they start feeling that I am in a love. But actually, that is not mm. love, but that is simply the infatuation. Mm. So my mm. uh, love with the subject, I fell for it, it really happened mm. in the late uh, master's, master's courses, MSc. And mm. thereafter, when I joined IIT Guwahati for research, mm. after mm. that, doing my PhD at a Guwahati University, of course, there was a purpose of doing PhD. But that, mm. was, the, that was the period when mm. uh, my thought process has broadened. I mm. um, uh, I went closer to different kind of people. I mm. spend most of the time with the fishermen community, which is the mm. most uh, one of the most marginalized community in the society. Mm. So at that time, mm. uh, during my school days, I was very much curriculum framed guy, not a paraku. I mean the paraku not to be discriminated, but we have a notion that para paraku students is lying to the books without putting mm. his, uh, his heads into it, not like that. Mm. 
uh, both mm. academic as well non academic but within this mm. curriculum frame i was there mm. at the mm. time of phd i realized that there might be many good life stories of my back benchers that i missed mm. at the time of my school days mm 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 so and i uh, very much thankful to my uh, supervisors who had so much of faith and uh, believes on me that they thought that i can have my own kind of experimentations so they have given mm. me so that kind of freedom so mm. that is the time i spent with uh, the fisherman community i try mm. to find the meaning of life right mm. i should recall mm. the name of a fisherman shukruda shukruda i have mm. pictures of him so when mm. i went with him uh, in the for collection of sample so at that point of mm. time both of mm. our purpose is the same to get a fish mm. sample but the mm. two different pub people with totally different purpose of life shukru mm. da is always a, uh, is in thought that what would be his dinner or lunch in the next day and my purpose mm. is something to getting a fish sample for my phd or research so this is, is the beautiful. fish that brings me to closer to different section of people i accept mm. diversity uh, in the mm. human society that's why i see fishes not only as ecologically as a culturally because as you said the bengali knows better in a taxonomy as you can uh, uh, say what kind of fish it is by testing its bone so a fish is connected to uh, our social cultural fabric and oh. i am sticking to fish not because uh, not because i am biased to fishes or i have prejudices because i know my limitations i cannot hold everything i cannot hold everything Be- being a person of zoology i i know few uh, birds or i love to see the animal behaviors but even if mm. you ask me about the marine fishes mm. i don't have much information so i had mm. a little mm. bit hesitation looking at the topic you mentioned that all about fishes i won't be able mm. to say all about fishes so i know mm. few guys are in and around me even not the all the fishes found in assam so this is the reason i am with fish so uh, <clears throat> i will come to uh, two questions one question at the very end yeah. of the program the program is what did you you said that you learned okay. about meaning of life so i would like to know right because while uh, got getting through fishes and research with shukruda you uh, got to know uh-huh. meaning of life that i will come at the end of this program that what you learned as the meaning of life partially of course uh, yeah obviously it's <laughs> a, it's, a, it's 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 a learning <laughs> process never stops but uh, the yeah, exactly, other thing exactly. that i uh, the other thing i noted down here is you said that that there, there is a great uh, pleasure of saying that i don't know that many of us uh, think that this is a weakness but uh, they should realize this is the power to know that you don't know so that's yeah, not a weakness but but a power every day i enter into the life of fishes i realize mm. that the little i know about them so underwater mm. this, the fishes are very much fishy i don't know where they yeah. go <laughs> what is their behavior what they yeah. eat it's uh, every day is getting fishy for me so every day i'm into this wo- world of them i realize that i know very little about them that's okay. true in fact that's so, a fact so so uh, the the very the very uh, little bit of uh, we if we go to uh, the fishy subject a bit so the first question that comes to my mind is like uh, Uh, how many uh, species of fish can we say are there in assam a very rough idea uh, rough idea yes well um, 218 species officially right so mm-hmm. i believe uh, the number would be more and mm-hmm. uh, comm- commercially available but i mean in the markets or if you visit the all the markets in and all the length and breadth of the state it'll be getting easily i think uh, 195 180 to 195 species but officially uh, 218 species including few mm. exotic species acha exotic species will come to that this is a very important mm. point that you have few, few uh, exotic well, species yeah mm. exotic species that i'll come to the point which is known as rukchada yes i want to i want to discuss that aspect of fish a bit chanda ha so what do you say that rupchanda in english or any scientific name something like that a scientific name uh, for the time it's not coming to my mind a english name is But, pakko fish is called rupchanda pakko okay. fish okay. okay so so along with, uh, ha say please 
So, so uh, Rupchada, we will discuss in details because I have many questions to know specifically of Rupchada and Paco hmm. fish, whatever it is. But uh, hmm. as you say that there are 218 species of fishes, the first thing hmm. uh, that comes to my mind, because for amphibians and reptiles and other groups we were dealing with, though, uh, they were separated hmm. into two parts. Either they are wild or they are domesticated. But fish is the only hmm. group which are which is being also wild. We are eating a lot of fishes. Hmm. So hmm. Are, are, there, are there some species which are protected under Shidio Indian Wildlife Protection Act? Well, um, there is no such freshwater fishes in and around Assam, which is in the Schedule 1 species. But of course, there are certain species, Indian species, that, that mm. are, uh, I mean, Schedule 1 species, but not, not the fishes one, in but, and but, around but, us. But, but are there any scheduled species that they are protected? Huh? Uh, 75 species are threatened, but their commercialization is uh, not prohibited. They are threatened 75 species uh, based uh -huh. on IUCN and another category that is called CAMP that was made uh -huh. done at the, uh, in the year 1999, Conservation uh -huh. Assessment and Management Planning. So okay. according to the combined report, there are 75 species that are threatened. You can India, say even Assam. As of Assam, I'm telling about the Assam. Assam, okay, 75, okay. okay yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, of all these uh, species that we have discussed, like 218 species, so legally mm -hmm. all these 218 species, can they be like used for, can they be in the market for selling? Yeah, most of the fishes, uh, the, the, the commercial commercialization of those fishes is not prohibited, but there are some regulations. But there are some mm. regulations, like, uh, for example, mm. the, the, we have a fishery mm. act. So mm. from 1st of April to 15th of July, if I'm not wrong at this point of time, okay, there are anyway, certain okay. regulations in the fishing. Mm. OK. So we have mm. to follow it like, mostly uh, dealing with the mesh size of the fishing uh, nets, mm. because mm. this is the um, breeding period of uh, fishes. Then mm. at the time, you cannot, uh, 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 the, the wild ca catch of brooder fish is prohibited. And you can, mm. in this period, you can say the, see the pre monsoon spell in Assam and the Northeast, right? We are having the pre monsoon spell, which is very much unique and characteristic feature, climatic feature of this region. We need this pre monsoon spell. That's mm. the reason our fish is getting mature a little bit early in comparison mm. to the other part of the country. In a week or, so, week or so, you will be seeing the belly-filled mamas and the very colorful papas in the spawns and marshy wetlands. Mm -hmm. this, uh, we are getting the matured, uh, I mean, uh, fishes over here. Mm -hmm. And a couple of years back, we had experience of not uh, having this pre-monsoon spell. And it's a general mm -hmm. observation that uh, during that uh, year, uh, there is a less availability of small indigenous fishes. Mm -hmm. So this period have some regulations uh, as per the Fishery Act that mm. we are having. So, uh, so tell me, like, uh, mm. uh, uh, did you do some uh, did you do some survey on the market? The what are the prominent fishes available in fish market, or did you have any idea that how many species of fishes are generally uh, generally uh, available in a day to day market throughout Assam? Like, how many species uh, of uh, roughly? Okay. Okay, I'm telling you uh, uh, ground uh, uh, statistics. So generally, I yeah. take my students, fishery uh, special paper students, to Uzan Bajar Fish Landing Center. So if mm. I uh, just make a visit superficially, I mean, not mm. uh, much into the segregating the small fishes, mm. because mm. many a time uh, we get scolded by the fisherman if we keep searching the small fishes mm. in midst of lot. So most of the time we make a I mean, superficial visit. So in one mm. round in a fish landing center of Uzan Bazar, I get more than 40 species. So it's a, on 40. an average, 40 species. So um, I believe there is no other any vertebrate group of which every morning and evening we display more than 40 species for sale. So you can imagine what is the stress of this biological vertebrate group every morning. And there is a number of uh, fish markets in the length and breadth of the country and the state. Every nook and corner so we are having fish markets. 
So tell me, Shamim, a, an interesting question that came to my mind is uh, the Fishery Act is for fishes. So does it cover ponds or prawns also? Uh, prawns, prawns come, prawn uh, comes under the aquaculture practice, okay. aquaculture practice, but at this point of time, I'm not sure because there is a legal point of view. So what okay. are included in the Fishery Act, I, I'm not uh -huh. exactly certain that is prawn is, uh, uh, is included or not, but prawn is under the aquaculture system, yes, so prawn snail, I, uh, but I, uh, I, 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 I love, I love, I love, uh, to have prawn. prawn, yeah, prawn, yeah, prawn, yeah. Okay. So, prawn. so, uh, big, uh, so I am very much like apprehensive if the selling of it concern, goes down, it, it will the, directly uh, affect. Uh, uh, I am very much concerned. There must be, so, uh, of course. <laughs> There must be because 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 of course uh, we have uh, many such rules and regulations may not be exactly into this fishery act, but we have mm -hmm. uh, because the seed collection, wild seed collections of the prawn, whatever is a uh, uh, fishes, there are of course certain regulations. That is certain. Okay, so uh, like uh, of the forty fishes that you generally see in the market, uh, which which mm. which are like I'll tell you my experience. I don't know. Please try to correct me. I don't know the English name. So some mm. fishes, like we used to uh, know them as Rani Mach. Mm. Tiger Barb, like something Hello? like that. Rani Mach. Hello. Ah, ah. Can, yeah, can you yeah. hear me? Yes, yes. I'm getting now. I'm getting your voice. Ah. So, so, yeah. so we, used to, we used to say that is Rani Mach. Black and yellow stripe stripe. Mm. And then we used mm -hmm, to exactly. get... The, uh, then there there was a fish I remember, very tasty and very soft. The bones are very soft. You just put in mouth. The, even when you uh, just pick it up, the flesh will fall. Bashpata uh, uh, or some some bashpata or I I do, don't remember the exact name. Ah yes, it is bahpotia. Uh, yeah. Bahpotia. Uh -huh. Ayla kolia. Okay. okay. Ayla so kolia. Are, specific name uh, as a bahpotia okay. as a vernacular name. And and what about this rani match that we say? Yeah, the, the screen can be shared. I would like to show the pictures. Uh -huh, of please, 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 you share. We want to see that. You just go to okay, the bottom. Shall I go to the screen? The, yes, you go to the bottom. You you check there. There is something known uh, as screen yeah, share. Uh, Click share there. Screen. Yes, yes, I got uh -huh. it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. I just click that. Yeah. And uh, see, just follow the instruction. They will say share or some. See, once you uh, click there, what will happen is uh, there ah. will be a mess message which say share screen. Then you will you will say share the screen, entire. Exactly. Huh, and then they will say entire screen huh. application window or Chrome tab. Huh. So uh, Chrome you are tab, going yep. to. Huh, but uh, your photo will be in uh, not in Chrome tab, right? It will be in uh, some application yeah, that's window, fine, right? No. So you can just do a share okay. so uh, shall... enti enti entire screen. Entire screen, okay. Share entire okay. screen. And, the, uh, and then uh, bottom, yeah. you click it. The, just click it. And there will be a share button. Yeah, exactly. I got it. Uh, now, can now you see my uh, uh, screen? Uh, not yet. I'm not getting not yet. your uh, voice. Right? Okay, I'm g giving you permission. Okay, wait. Okay, C can you see my screen? Wait, huh? I can see. Yes. Ah, okay. Hope others can also see. Yes, yes, everybody. If I can see, all can see. Okay, then fine. For some reason, it's not coming. Uh -huh. Yeah, Thank can you see the fishes? Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe you're talking about this species, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So uh, this is called Rani fish, uh, and uh, in other parts also called as in Bengali Bowmach. And okay. uh, and can you tell me how many? Th there's a, not a single species, of course. So right. there's a ah. yeah, there's, there's a at least three species. So this is okay. Botia derio, and this might be Botia rostrata or Botia uh, uh, lohacha. Okay. Uh, I'm Botia. not sure at the point of time, but yes, this is Botia Derio and this is Botia Loha Chata. And the interesting okay. point is that, um, uh. Uh, I mean, very minor points in the identification of these fishes. Uh. Uh, you can see the longitudinal stripes, right? Okay. okay. And yes. here you can see the Y shape. Y yes. shape. 
so uh, the identification of fishes at uh, all stages of lifetime is very difficult because yeah. what yeah. happened uh, this fishes as the juvenile they are having y shape but yeah. with the uh, increase of their age if not mm. catched in wild sometimes mm. what happened the y shape get dissolved and mm. they become a uh, longitudinal so it gives mm. a difficulty in identification of botia lohachata or botia mm. loha uh, rostrata with the botia mm. derio because at mm. adult mm. stage both look similar both look similar so, uh, but these are the different uh, species for people like me i will i i will have a different sort of question that you will that will that will baffle you like i will i i will not have too much of like how they look i'll say how they taste or okay. do okay. they taste <laughs> how they taste ha na do they taste similar because there is a very close relative so okay. by, huh. they are closest relative so it's very difficult to uh, differentiate taste while you cook it but more huh. than the i mean the cuisines on plate my uh, my interest with the fishes is that they are they are very fantastic ornamental fishes correct because of their very beautiful coloration mm -hmm. so so i'll tell you a small story i want to share uh, uh, in sure. in an in aquarium uh, what happens uh -huh. there is uh, i i kept fishes in aquarium so we uh, went to this one aquarium shop and uh, see like most of the aquarium kids at that point of time they were like not a nat natural type of kids they did not know what about fishes and all but i had a keen interest in most of the wild, mm. small small wildlife so i knew rani rani fish that botia and i went there in the shop and he mm. he has so shown me that we have a new fish and it is tiger barb he named it as tiger mm -hmm. barb okay ha? and and said uh, barb, par yeah. pair uh -huh. par, par, par pair is like uh, at that point of time i uh, 15 years back he was telling that uh, par pair is like uh -huh. 150 rupees hmm. as soon as i say okay. uh, he uh -huh. told me like you can take this is a very good is a from amazon everything from amazon so uh, amazon, amazon <laughs> rain okay. type thing <laughs> so and then I, every, ah, every fish but, is from amazon yeah so i said ah it's rani fish so he immediately told oh, you know mm. ah we have kept it for experimental purpose okay so so, so identification okay, okay. saved me 150 rupees <laughs> identification and, saved you yes exactly so, so shamim tell me like uh, yeah Mm. now when you go to uh, see the market and see all these things so uh, like which fish do you think is getting rarer day by day year by year which are the fishes that you see in okay. your lifetime ha huh. i'm most concerned with the small indigenous fishes i'm not concerned with mainly with the indian major cubs because we are doing mm. culture so we, we are mm. do two types of fishery culture fishery and a captive fishery so mm. if uh, uh, we have a um, we are doing culture of certain fishes like uh, indian major cubs but what about the small indigenous fishes okay that mm. we uh, catch it from wild again i would like to share the screen and t want to tell you a story mm. of a very interesting fish the name of this fish is after the name of the state now the fish is rare and almost need in my observation in the last few years i would like to so show please. you the and, fish and and, uh, and once you share the screen you don't have to unshare it i can switch huh? on the windows okay okay you can do it right okay uh, yes i can control that yeah so this It's is coming. the fish is coming right yes ha uh, it's there almost there is a small okay. lag between her i can see so if if anyone is not familiar the ha uh, yeah so if anyone is not uh, i mean familiar the assam is uh, they would be unable to read it this is written ahomia rajamas that means assam is kingfish the name uh. of the fish is after the name of the state but uh. Uh, this fish is i think not uh, not uh, i mean it's almost as rare i i couldn't find it uh, in the st state in my uh, sampling i i have mm. a specimens but all these fishes i collected from uh, arunachal pradesh and if uh, mm. akash and rashmi is there they are listening thank you to them and dn dasar of uh, rajiv gandhi university so i have got mm. these specimens from the um, that uh, uh, arunachal pradesh so this fish mm. is assamese kingfish scientific name is uh, cyprinion semiblotum so mm. very 
very beautiful shiny uh, silvery mm. color that's and taste is good that's might be it is the name is a kingfish and then uh, there is another story with this fish so in earlier days uh, whenever the fisherman gets this fish in his catch or her catch he or she has mm. to submit it to the kings maybe mm. because of their high demand that is the mm. reason the name of the fish is the assamese kingfish i mean probable reason of having this name of this fish as assamese kingfish so this I, uh, fish first ha huh, please please no, carry on no, no you continue i i will ask you a small question in between uh, i i know that there is a puthi match and then some uh -huh. match we say as a putha match putha bigger puthi match we okay, say putha okay so it mm. is something like a big uh, like that puthi type similarities exactly and yes. uh, there is the reason uh, uh, we have erroneous identification misidentifications and uh, in the upper side of upper north side of the sam fishermen sometimes sell the larger puthi fishes with the name yeah. of this fish because okay. this is nearby to arunachal and they said that we caught it from the arunachal and this is that as a missing fish this mm. fish was described in the upper stretches of brahmaputra uh, at uh, dibruga and mm. uh, the habitat of this fish is little bit uh, Uh, shallow uh, for the juveniles shallow mm. and highly oxygenated fast flowing rivers mm. right and the, mm. and the, with the development of the juveniles they move into the deeper water so i don't mm. know there is no such study still now but maybe there is any link with the climatic change temperature increase or the pollution that this mm. fish is uh, is maybe wiped out totally from this uh, uh, stretches of brahmaputra and mm. this is found in the other states and uh, shallow highly oxygenated hill streams uh, of arunachal pradesh and other states mm -hmm. so i would i would like to uh, mention something else uh, okay. th this is assamese kingfish semi uh, cyprinian semiplatum there are other two other guys close relative to it one is okay. uh, cyprinian manipurensis uh, semiplotus manipurensis found in manipur and uh, uh, semiplotum modestus found in mizoram the three guys mm. are present in the three state of northeast mm. so uh, again uh, if uh, i want to show something so yes. their uh, shuttle identification is very difficult in between cyprinian semiplotum and cyprinian modest modestus uh, okay. so th as you confuse with the larger size of putti so there is a a number of reasons that you may get confused with these two species so because mm. they uh, seem uh, totally similar mm. the minor observation is that you can see the difference of the pose mm. the maxillary pose uh, the the orientations yeah mm. is a 6 mm. to 7 pose in one side so all together 10 to 12 pose in a one line in case of assamese kingfish mm. but in case of semiplotum modestus the pose is in a, uh, in a scattered form okay in a sc okay. scattered form so that that minute observation will help you to identifying this fish from putti fish as well as this close relatives correct i will so uh, mm. uh, the manipurensis is the putti fish right no 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 this is a close relative of this one assamese kingfish oh, okay okay okay, they, they, okay these two are close relatives along with the third one that was okay. semiplotus modestus found in mizoram okay 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 so uh, so like uh, what is that the bigger putti what is the name of that what what is the scientific name yeah regarding this putti i am telling you uh, we say all this putti right there uh, are 13 species of putti uh, 13 species of putti even in in assam so uh, that is the problem uh, while uh, describing the species with vernacular name uh, all are puntias uh, and recently uh, some genera has changed to pethia but yeah. while dealing with the 13 species of putti maybe you are mm. talking about puntia sarana or uh, uh, there is an uh, i forgot the name at this point of uh, time there is a uh, introduced one exotic okay. puntia species okay. so that 13 species when you are dealing with puntia species so vernacularly mm. we all call them uh, the puntias putti fishes so mm -hmm. while dealing with the small indigenous species maybe two three species are vanishing from the good face of the earth without uh, our notice so that is the concern uh, uh, with the erroneous identification of different species and because of we are having because we are culturally involved so we have different names of fishes at mm -hmm. different parts of the state we are we are a big uh, uh, inhabitant of a big state so mm -hmm. the same name of the putti fish in adobe is different from nalbari gualpara and then from uh, upper correct. assam correct correct that is a exactly. real challenge so i'm telling you there are 13 species 13 species of putti fish all we call them vernacularly putti 
but okay. certain different species so okay. might be we were losing now, one to yes definitely because uh, that yeah. is why identification uh, that's why i always stress the identification so if we don't know what it is then we, it will be very hard to conserve it so there should be right. a point that we know that what we need to conserve now uh, uh, like that the point like that we are discussing in between i'll tell all of you those who are seeing this program that if you have any questions please uh, keep and i'll take the question at the last 15 minutes we are we are just uh, just above 30 minutes mark so we'll take the question uh, just when we have 10 to 15 minutes left so you can just keep on uh, sending the question and we can discuss and uh, now shamim that i want to come to the point that uh, mm. we needed to talk about that i uh, pointed out that rupchada fish mm -hmm. like uh, mm. i i am very concerned regarding that i am um, because of my very limited knowledge like rupchada mm. or something like this fishes are very uh, tasty at one point of time but also i see the teeth and they are like pirana mm. so most of the native mm. fish will be i think no match uh when they mm. are uh, is sharing the habitat because of the, as i see them so mm. are they, they are they because when i was young i never see this fish okay i never saw it okay. but now it's flooded in the market so my question is like is this mm -hmm. a native fish to the region or it is an introduced or exotic fish yeah i'm telling you about the uh, very briefly about the history of the exotic fishes and the plight of uh, fishery science at our places shall i um, do the stop sharing or no let it be let it be because i uh, okay. i can you have a control over I... that no? right okay yes yes done hmm. okay so uh, we put very little concern on the exotic fishes uh, hmm. as you mentioned about this uh, rupchandra uh, pako fish hmm. as well as i would like to add another species that is a hypostoma plecostoma that is very hmm. common in this news uh, recent days that is uh, commonly also called as crocodile fish is african catfish so hmm. uh, i believe my personal observation more than the rupchanda this hypostoma plecostoma is carrying more threat to the ecology of uh, the wetlands of assam and uh, hmm. uh, yesterday or day before yesterday i got a news that it has also invaded the uh, wetlands of manipur as well it is reported from yeah, the manipur i, I have seen right you uh, Yeah, Thank video hypostoma plecostoma. Yeah. So rupchanda nowadays is uh, uh, this culture is also going on at our place, mm. as I am reported. So this culture is going on in Assam, Bengal, and Bangladesh areas. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, the problem is that we are very much less concerned for the exotic species and their harm they can do to the local indigenous species and the ecology. While mm. I was associated with the Ganga River Basin Environment Man Management Plan. so my area was from banaras to farakka so mm. uh, in a, a information at the time i encountered with the information that at a stretch of ganga river the common carp the cyprinus scorpio mm. that is exotic that invaded mm. from the confinement because we put very less effort we are very less concerned with dealing with the fishes if we need mm. to translocate a rhino from the kaziranga to manas we have n number of formalities but while we are culturing exotic fishes we put very less effort so what happened in ganga the common carp invaded from confinement and they uh, when it went into the natural ecosystem of ganga and because they are rapid breeder and they wiped out the uh, indigenous species the middle stretch of ganga is a similar with the middle stretch of brahmaputra this ecology is kind of similar so there the dominant species are indian major carps and the big cat fishes like aryan boralli and those are the dominant fishes so it happened in the ganga as report is there that those area were invaded by the exotic species in brahmaputra i mean doubt there is no such work uh, of invasion of exotic species and this hypostoma plecostoma that i said the crocodile fish that fish is a very hardy fish as a high tolerant fish and very low oxygen it can survive so when the wetlands uh, again they have a role in eutrophication and uh, they are rapid breeder and when there is a very less water in the pond they make certain nest at the bottom of the pond and while uh, the other fishes are wiping out because of less of water and oxygen this fish can survive so this mm -hmm. fish is bearing threat and this mm -hmm. hypostoma plecostoma i can show you a figure a uh, picture if i am having it yes this one i have collected from a natural water body of nolbury site from the natural or uh, water body so they are mm. invaded and thriving over there 
so, so uh, tell me shamim so one is... minute hmm. tell yeah, me please. because because this fish i i i have i have a small uh, memory because i was involved hmm. in aquarium i had an aquarium so in aquarium hmm. shop they used to say that uh, there is a fish hmm. like similar to that and they used to tell hmm. that this is a crocodile fish and they will keep the hmm. uh, aquarium clean if you clean. keep exactly. them exactly uh, hmm. they, 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 so my thought process is like Uh, is it possible mm-hmm. that that aquarium somebody like people like us we bring it uh, because they are sort of not cute but they clean our aquarium and once they go mm-hmm. big big that i cannot mm-hmm. keep them any longer in aquarium because it competes with mm-hmm. other fishes mm-hmm. i just throw exactly. it in some nala nala or uh, some river or wetland Grains, and from yeah. that they, mm-hmm. uh, is it the process mm-hmm. that is what they have gone through exactly exactly i believe so and you got it correct and mm-hmm. most of the beautiful exotic fishes now you say this is this might not be very beautiful but for cleaning purpose or when it is a small it's okay to maintain in the aquarium but when it become larger it's difficult so we release mm-hmm. the fishes into natural mm-hmm. water bodies as i said that we are very uh, um, less concerned with the fishes uh, uh, mm-hmm. as we are concerned with the larger majestic animals so mm-hmm. this happened with this fish crocodile fish exactly and in case of other small beautiful fishes if even if we throw it to the natural water bodies so generally they uh, survive because mm. it is not their habitat so they generally die so this mm. as i said this fish is very hardy fish and this fish mm. knows uh, to adapt well in a different aquatic ecosystem and that is the reason why this fish was released uh, without any uh, uh, i mean uh, proper way and uh, mm. it invaded the natural water system near the zoo uh, i mean uh, assam state zoo Mm, there is a drain uh, the one fish is collected from there and the specimen is uh, preserved in the assam uh, museum as well uh, assam state zoo museum as well okay so so uh, you think that they they have already colonized in brahmaputra river system um, um brahmaputra river system i'm not sure i have collected it from the wetlands of nalbari so yes in the natural natural water bodies so if it's okay. a natural water bodies is a stagnant water or running water but it is um, putting hamper to the ecosystem so na uh, rupchada that we were discussing let's go back to rupchada is rupchada is it just a fish which is there in fishery or is it there also in the natural ecosystem of assam uh, personally i have collected a hypostoma plecostoma this this fish from the natural water body but i have report i visited certain places of uh, south kamrup area Uh, that uh, while uh, swimming in the pond they have encountered with the uh, rupchanda uh, oh. but by hand i have not collected from the natural water but it's still now but i believe um, that that fish also invaded from the um, i mean confinement uh, and uh, uh, gone into the natural water bodies but yeah, i have not collected from from uh, my side personally as i okay. did it from this fish for this fish okay now uh, uh, i'll come to a very uh, Uh, very different sort of a group of fish and uh, mm. one is one is uh, one is i know eel that i wanted to talk mm. uh, because that is, that is a fish that looks too much like snake and then mm. there is another fish which is almost like eel but it is very different mm. obviously that is we say it's mm. a bing match bami match mm-hmm, mm-hmm. bami match yeah it 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 goes this much big and it does not have fins uh, well uh, uh, structured fins and all it's something like that without all this so tell me mm. when uh, i i have a very interesting uh, i have a sort of thought process that fishes have evolved that fins and uh, mm. they uh, swim through water and all so mm. uh, eel i know it will some somehow, somehow it will dig and uh, be inside the soil maybe that's why it has lost uh, the limbs so it becomes sorry fins so it becomes easy uh, for them to uh, dig deep so uh, in, but in bami match what do you say uh, english bami match in english uh, uh, english uh, is a ill shaped fish scientific name is mastacembalus armatus yeah, too tough but what ill set sorry is ill like fish it's not a true ill it is a ill shaped fish Uh, uh-huh. English English name we call is a spiny eel because its dorsal fin have some spines, so it's okay. called uh, spiny eels. And scientific name is Master Sembelus armatus. Okay. So shall I, my shall question... I go to this eels? Yeah, I have okay. pictures please, of it. Okay. Please, 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 please. I love to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I I must have because. 
uh well uh, this one this one i guess this one is a true eel this is angular mm -hmm. bengalensis of about my size height wow. mm. yeah, from where did you get this uh this is the adjoining uh, areas this is the transition areas of assam and meghalaya okay so this so big I, this this is not even the uh, fully matured uh, fully matured and uh, one of my friend i should mention his name banojoti so we came to know uh, report that this fish is there in those uh, market areas so we visited and we got the specimens as well and uh, so one is how uh, big this. how big does they go get Mm, maximum size i have to check but um, that encountered with me is a uh, more than 5 feet oh more than more than 5 feet yes so the, the one that i place. the one that i get in my drain mm -hmm. they they are hardly 2 feet or less than exactly. that so this is a different species this is a different obviously there's a different species and this okay. species have many stories uh, hmm. uh, uh, though not observed personally but uh, the fisherman says that fish crawls uh, up into the hills and take the uh, uh, bamboo shoots and hmm. uh, they they collected the fish on its way back when it's coming back to the streams and this using the same trails they put hmm. put some ashes and uses mm. uh, some uh, leaves because it's very slippery it's, it's mucus mm. secretion is very high uh, mm. so uh, it's difficult to catch so using the mm. ash uh, they capture the fish while it's returning back to its original places mm. and uh, yeah please okay so the fish so, you uh, are talking uh, about uh, the fish you are talking about if i'm not wrong yeah. you are talking yeah. about this one bami fish right Wait. Ah, of course, this is the one yeah. I was talking. But yeah. there are some smaller ones as well. Ha! Huh. Smaller ones. Those are again is close relative. Those are again huh. spiny eels. The huh. uh, vernacularly known as tora or turi. Scientific name turi. is huh. macrognathus. Ha! Huh. Huh. Macrognathus aral. The another huh. guy is macrognathus pankelus. Okay. Okay. Two species. So yeah, yeah. obviously I have seen this. Yeah, this is the one I was huh. talking about. now 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 okay. tell me one one thing shami before you yeah. go to something else i want to know uh, uh, mm -hmm. about, a little bit about uh, this is again eel right ha uh, eel shaped fish eel shaped so fish kusia monopterus kusia acha mm. so eel and eel shaped fish are not same no eel uh, true eels are from this group anguillidae anguillidae okay. right so another true okay. eel is uh, this this one This is again a true eel, um, Pisodono fishboro. So okay. these are true okay. eels, and the other okay. fishes I shown, there is a similarity. So they are not true eels. So we call it as eel-like fish or eel-shaped fish because of they have okay. a serpentine movement. Serpentine okay, movement. correct. So, so, all, so in I, my, I, I, sorry, in my drain, in my drain that I yeah. get is uh, that is kuchia, right? My, yeah, kuchia might be. It's most probably you are getting in a you are getting in a Guwahati city, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, I believe it should be kusia. Uh, you are not okay. supposed to okay. get angular bengalensis, of course, and not a piece of the nephis boro. Okay. So, okay. so it should Correct. be kusia. And I, I just want okay. to add one point. Most of these okay. eels is related with the traditional therapeutic practices of Assam. Okay. So these fishes are used in traditional uh, treatments. Uh, like what treatment? Like, uh, let me open up this picture again. so the mucus of this fish uh, mm. i mean i don't know the scientific uh, uh, background of it but the traditional mm. therapeutics ha huh? the mucus the mucus mm. is used uh, for the treatment of burn injury mm. Mm. and uh, in south india if i'm not wrong the mucus is uh, mixed with the rice bran for the treatment of arthritis okay treatment of arthritis okay. so these okay. reports are there i mean this is the just uh, published reports okay so uh, so and, and, again, uh, like, and again kuchia kuchia is used for treatment of anemia because it's a red meat uh, fish so uh, so well you are having uh, um uh, i mean uh, anemic so for that uh, purpose uh, the kuchia is fed yeah at one point of time my mother was prescribed with kuchia because her hemoglobin was very low okay yes this fish is right uh, so uh, now uh, i just want to tell i just remembered one more fish that i encountered but nowadays i don't see it's a, it's mm. it's something like crocodile 
it's a coquila coquila fish mm coquila fish is a long beak having long a long beak, beak. And, and teeth can be seen yeah it's it's a xenontodon cancilla if you are okay. uh, pointing out about this uh, coquila fish uh, vernacular name is coquila then it's a xenontodon cancilla is very long beak okay so so is it it's i got it in dipur bill uh, at mm -hmm. some point of time and yeah, it was sold it there now. Bill, yeah. hmm. but now it is i don't yeah. so it is it decreasing in number because it has become i think i don't see it much now uh, even even in my observations in the local markets i see this fish very rarely okay. uh, i okay. i i get this fish at current situation i get this fish uh, at uh, the western side of assam Uh, but here at uh, guwahati i really see this fish okay and and suddenly i remember, like rem remember another fish that sometime mm -hmm. uh, the fishermen bought uh, with other fishes one or two mm -hmm. nobody ate mm -hmm. that it is like a balloon type fish okay okay, okay. Fish. i have yeah i have this fish <laughs> i would love to Can show you? that fish yeah yes. yeah i'm having this this one i guess yes right? yes yes of yeah, but yeah. not that big but yeah So what is this? Uh, this is Tetradon kutkutia. Now the scientific name has changed. Now it's Leodon kutkutia. Leodon kutkutia. Ha, Leodon kutkutia. Vernacular name Gonga top. So Gonga it can top. engulf. So, it can engulf air, and uh, that's 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 why it's looking like a balloon. So it's anti-predatory behavior. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes in a fear or uh, to uh, anti-predatory, uh, you can say. uh it has that capacity of engulfing uh, air and one mm. point it bears a um, uh, tetradoxin because of that mm. toxin uh it is not it is not come in the list of food fishes generally it is avoided because of having that toxin in it tetradoxin so 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 as you say like a very interesting question came to my mind like mm. most of the fish we eat but mm. are there any fishes that uh, can uh, cause death of human if they are eaten okay as of Fish. the 20 218 species in and around us so apart from this tetradon kutkutia uh, there is no such species and okay. all the and the, there is another uh, i mean uh, difference with the rest of the part is that in other parts uh, in certain parts not other parts in certain part of the country maybe confined with certain major major carps or the big fishes but in assam okay. and north is there is no i mean fish that is out of the list of your food habits every small fishes we eat small to okay. smallest fishes we eat all the fishes have food value even the genontodon cancilla earlier that fish doesn't have any food value but nowadays people take it uh, this genontodon so cancilla what, what is that genontodon that you said na coquila fish genontodon okay, cancilla okay. with the long body yeah even i am okay. showing you this fish this fish uh, we call that this fish doesn't have uh, a uh, food value uh, but, but i encounter crocodile it looks like crocodile fish yeah it, it looks like a crocodile fish is a devil fish english name scientific yeah. name is chaka chaka c h a c a c h a c a is it indigenous fish indigenous fish of course many people asked me is indigenous fish i collected this fish from the western part of assam and uh, okay. though it's, it is said that it doesn't be any food value but people take it as a food uh people take it as drying the uh, I, i mean as a dry fish also people used it i i i got this information and i have seen it so this is a so, very much uh, indigenous fish uh -huh. yeah please so 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 the uh, one of the last technical question that i have little bit is uh, mm -hmm. i have seen or i have heard about electric eels in meghalaya right right garo hill uh, uh -huh. so so is it true uh as for my scientific knowledge it is not a electric fish uh huh. it's uh, it might be some uh we have anguilla bengalensis that eel true eel anguilla huh. bengalensis and we have two three uh monopteras that's the kuchia you said now the kuchia species the same genus we have two three species over here at our region but hmm. uh electric eel is not native here and i have never encountered with electric fish and my scientific knowledge says uh, uh, it can't be here uh, and it is uh, south american uh, fish is right as african or south american uh, south american if i am not wrong but it's not native uh -huh. here 
not native here okay. so our okay. media our media is also uh, is uh, when uh, the media do i mean uh, such big blunders with the big cats while uh, showing that man animal conflict human and uh, uh, human animal conflict at maligao they show royal bengal yeah. tiger in the back uh, so yeah. they can do anything with the fishes because they uh, are having all the least least concern uh, but you group so in okay. one day i got a picture in a local media that electric fish in a um, mirza fish market so i went yeah. there it was nothing else but angula bengalensis okay okay so so shamim now i'll come to that yeah. one question and then we'll take mm -hmm. uh, questions from all the viewers that they have uh, passed right. on through comments so my right. question to it last question is you told that during uh, your study and with fish and with uh, the fishermen you got a bit mm -hmm. about meaning of life so so <laughs> i'm coming back to that so 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 what what was the essence there that we that you got there Okay, okay. Before that, I would like to. It's I'm taking the. Uh, I mean, opportunity to show sure. uh, Mr. Shukru, Shukruda. So this okay. is uh, I, I'm sampling with him, and uh, okay. sorry, yeah. This is Shukruda, and uh, this is Shukruda and Shukruda and his family. This oh, person, okay. Uh, okay, and his family. So okay. I can't say I I know the meaning of life, but uh, I know. that uh, uh, people find uh, the reason of life in a different way the bhupen hazarika dr bhupen hazarika sings and used to write songs uh, 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 of different meaning of life many painters draw paints through his painting he is getting a meaning of life with the people we are dealing with science maybe we are running after the science as well to find the truth but ultimately the definition is the same correct so Uh, ultimately the, everyone is uh, is trying to find out then uh, the uh, artist have find a meaning of life, life by through his painting and might be we are finding through the, our experiments that is only the so, uh, that is that is the essence i believe so in the last talk i suddenly mm -hmm. remember i told there was a last group discussion with students and i right. told them that meaning of life like uh, it's a very old question that what mm. is the purpose of my life so hmm. i suddenly realized this may be very true that our purpose is to produce plastic <laughs> okay okay humanity the origin of yeah. humanity or the yeah. purpose of humanity is earth is to produce plastic because earth could do everything and anything for itself uh, but it right, not right. produce plastic yes it could not produce so plastic purpose. for itself because <laughs> well so said earth yeah both art bought human and say uh -huh. now my purpose is filled and they can uh, create plastic so right. i think the purpose of human life may be somewhat uh, uh, rotating around or revolving around making plastic so should not sorry. blame us yeah so exactly. now what now what i'll do but i'm not mm. serious i was joking so it's not yeah. so true <laughs> so anyway i'll take some of the questions now so uh. <clears throat> no uh, because uh, we say we are dealing with science very proudly but if i am not advocating for fishes because if i call i do molecular biology so if i take a dna from fish if i call the fishes with levio rohita or i call him by rohu so this is they, they are nothing to do with that they are doing good at their habitat so we are just mm. trying to make us feel that we are doing something very interesting in science so we have to but, we have to do something and make ourselves busy that's the purpose busy that's it that's the purpose otherwise and, the rohu fish or the katla fish they are doing best at that positions yes and my father would probably say that they are doing very good in uh, sospen uh, so everyone has their own priority <laughs> my father will say that they will be okay, doing okay. good in kadai So you want okay, to show okay. us some photo? <laughs> yeah, I just uh, just um, I'm curious to uh, I mean not yeah. curious I'm intended to show this fish I, because of I, this coloration. I, I kept this in aquarium. I think there are two species in my nala at one point of time. Okay, this is one red yeah. form, another one is blue. Okay, um, the coloration varies actually. This is a trichogaster tri species. This is Kholi Hona okay. in vernacular. uh so this uh, coloration varies in the habitat to habitat at the time of breeding season also and there is a slight sexual dimorphism as well 
so many mm-hmm. a time the fisherman uh, call is a different species the male and female but uh, i found that it is a slight uh, sexual dimorphism is also there and of course there are two species of trichogaster is also there so fishes have very good coloration actually see this beautiful uh-huh. this is isn't, uh, isn't this beautiful this is very beautiful Actually, coloration tell me tell me shami yeah. one answer i want because mm-hmm. i was too i was uh, at one point of time for 2 to 3 hours i was like behaving as a fisherman day in and huh? day, day okay. yes okay. so i was day in and day out i was like i was bringing jal fish net, gill okay. net from beltola and i right, was like right. doing this uh, with what mm-hmm. the hook fishing hook i was doing mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i was doing lot of fishing but i learned that this fish never mm-hmm. eats hook never it's hook. It, okay yeah uh, i i yeah, have never ha uh, ha uh, uh, yeah yeah please carry on complete your question yeah because of the similar kawi match mm mm-hmm. of the similar size or any mm-hmm. other fish like the most stupid fish is chang mass even <laughs> if the hook is without any bait mm-hmm. it will eat it uh, yeah the most mm-hmm. stupid chang mass and uh, kawi match is very clever because it's the hook so it will to to yeah. it will do like this and you mm-hmm. have to be very uh, mm-hmm. uh, you have to be precise when to give the jerk right now and now this fish in my whole experience it got mm-hmm. stuck in gillnet then and there mm-hmm. many things but mm-hmm. never mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. so okay. is, is it true so in that case i won't put any expertise of mine because here your expertise is more on hand yeah. practice but but this is true that different fish has different behavior and the people who are associated with fishing they know what kind of bait to be used at what point of time they to be used and what are the actual uh, i mean locations to get them even the shukru many a time he doesn't have any uh, academic background but he said why you have come at that time you won't get this fish at this point or uh, let us go to that kind of habitat for a very yeah. warm like fish called pillaya indica and he knows mm. the very uh, i mean the habitat of this fish so actually mm. my expertise here is very less but yes this is true i came to know from my father as well that they uh, use different bait for different fishes because uh, they have different so, kind of responses to baits yep so this is one of the most important discussion or topic that uh, for me at least because i am mm. i have i have invested a lot of my life at the at very 15 to 22 years i was like yeah. very much involved in fishing i was like in nala so all these things so what i did was i want to share uh-huh. i i learned that to catch magur mhm uh-huh. so you have to i went to uh, uh, guala mhm uh-huh. and bank caught cow dung okay and then removed water hyacinth Hmm. empty the plot of water i seen from the my pond right and then i took the whole cow dung and put it there and then okay. i jumped i jumped on the uh, the empty area to make the uh-huh. water muddy because it is okay. said that uh-huh. if you have a muddy water then magur match will come okay okay so, so we did that then i i just want to share my experience because i am getting very excited <laughs> for this, this is we want to, and what bait we used to use is uh, artworm a very good bait mm. Mm. egg of ant egg of ant is also mm. a good bait mm-hmm. then lo- yes, locust the uh, what do you say uh, locust mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. these are also very good bait so we bait, were yeah. very in, very inhuman i took the locust alive and put the mm. hook like this on its head is totally mm. unhuman practice and put it there in the water so water. these were what uh, then we also used dry fish we took uh, maida okay uh, dry fish and we took yeah. cotton okay because if you mix maida and dry fish the maida uh-huh. because of water will come out of your hook okay okay so now you take maida dry fish and fish. cotton and okay mix it cotton mm-hmm. will get the give the fiber so that your maida and dry fish sticks onto the hook now one day it happened okay, that okay. and then yeah. there is what what is that fish sholmach what is that yeah. english name sholmach sholmach yeah. this is channa species yeah. so uh, channa uh, striata 
okay so Shulma, what Chandra what, Shulma, what yeah. you, snake head fish for sure hmm. so for shulmach you have to have another type of trap what you have to do hmm. is uh, hmm. these big big hooks for hmm. shulmach big hook you take hmm. changmach hmm. and take it and pierce its back okay with, interesting uh, ha, and you have to just put the uh, uh, fishing uh, the hook in a position that hmm. it should be just touching the water so you have to okay. it, it it should be like this your rod and the hook should mm-hmm. just touch the water and the right. the the eight fish will keep on doing mm-hmm. like this in mm-hmm. the surface of the water okay. and that will attract right. the fish so i got uh, this what you said that uh, shoal by th- this method mm-hmm. but one day mm-hmm. one heron got stuck in my uh, this okay. one hook. Oh, 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 okay. there are okay, lots okay. of stories of fish so anyway i'll not uh-huh. take your time anymore <laughs> so i am to uh, uh, there some uh, uh, okay she is uh, nirvan said hi okay all the highs i reply from myself mm-hmm. hi some okay. also reply hi for all hi, the yeah, so big hi yes big hi acha big hi so yeah. apart from that uh, somebody said i think that uh, rupchada uh-huh. is is it the name of rup scientific name of rupchada what you is the name the is it a screen uh, you just see the screen i can see that okay uh, you as okay i'll just I'll, can you see the screen in your screen the name is there no i can see i am still with the, my pictures oh you just need to okay i'll do that i can i remove the pictures yeah 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 you can remove the picture okay now you see still it's not there you just uh, then you just need to uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, dibhajyoti uh, wrote it right pampers mm, i'm not sure i i have this name you know this name of the paku scientific uh, scientific name of paku fish somewhere okay. i kept it but i forgot okay. that point of time mm, okay mm, no i'm not sure i'm not sure okay anyway we can uh-huh. always find it out you have to find uh, it yeah yeah it is there in my record but some point i'm not i'm missing it right now so shankho not... says shankho mm-hmm. says shankho mishra says sir uh-huh. uh-huh. what effect does introduce fish like gambusia and tilapia mm-hmm. have over native mm-hmm. fishes and water bodies okay the gambusia has a positive effect that it is it it is the mosquito larva so that's why one point of time it has been used intentionally for malaria control um but it other its impact on uh, uh, ecology uh, aquatic ecology i have less information but yes tilapia tilapia okay. is again a very rapid breeder so it, it it has a power to wipe out the indigenous species and and i uh, fa- saw, saw some uh, incidents where tilapia is culturing without following any rules even in mm. assam so without a proper embankment or a confinement so that it cannot uh, move out so obviously this uh, tilapia uh, has an effect uh, b- being it a very rapid breeder it has a impact it is a competition with the local indigenous species and I, I, as well as it, it has a impact on eutrophication hmm. and the part 2 of the question is what is the effect of the of release of aquarium species what is hypostomas plecostomas plecostoma. what is the what effect is the... of yeah i think i i covered that issue uh, oh, yeah. is the last issue the third part is is it legal uh, to keep fishes in Uh, native fishes in india like uh, he means is it aquarium. legal to keep uh, is it legal to keep uh, native fishes in india i mean in aquarium yes i think that is the point yeah yeah that's he made that yeah even as a fisheries uh, uh, we deal with two parts as a fish biology and a fishery science so while we de- deal with the f- uh, fish biology that's a different thing while we are dealing with the fisheries i mean fisheries and aquaculture uh we don't say don't eat fish for the conservation of purpose we often say eat fish because it is the not though cheap uh, at present uh, point of time but it is a very good animal protein it can be taken from the child to the old person everyone right and uh, 
uh, the, the, when we are uh, dealing with the uh, exotic fishes for aquarium, why we, we are not, uh, um, I mean, presenting our own indigenous fishes. So rather mm -hmm. we encourage to uh, go with the indigenous fishes uh, to use as an ornamental fish in aquarium. So it is fine, mm -hmm. we can do it. But I'm, as I said, I'm not telling, I'm not saying you don't keep the indigenous fishes in aquarium or don't go for eating fishes. I'm not eat fish, but for the eating purpose, we need uh, a, a thought of a conservation of the small indigenous fishes because a certain point of time if the, the example i cited about the 13 species of putti erroneous descriptions are there uh, we have a less concern for fishes we rarely see is a vertebrate group and it is the vertebrate group that is getting the huge stress as a as mm -hmm. a commodity so keeping mm -hmm. everything on mind uh, we can go for uh, 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 having a fish in aquarium or we can go for eating a fish. There's no problem at all. We should, we even as a uh, fishery, uh, fisheries, we encourage it to have more fishes. So there is another question from Akhilesh Kumar Varma. You please share yeah. some information yeah. on legal fish productive in a way of airport uh, authority and idea. It's like layer and there. Okay, thank you, Akhilesh, sir. For your question um this is again is there's a legal point is there uh, we are a little bit far away from the legal issues but as far we are informed there is a market of fishes that goes to northeast small indigenous fishes via calcutta to different south asian countries illegally and uh, one uh, fish uh, that is uh, if it is there um, i can show uh, Can you see this fish? No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is a glass fish, very transparent. So this uh, the, uh, this fish, uh, sometimes we came to know it is given a coloration, fluorescent coloration. And so mm. that it uh, price becomes uh, much higher and mm. it is sold as ornamental fishes in many parts of the South Asian countries uh, through uh, illegally. So um, again, uh, because there's a legal aspect is there, we are a little bit far away from this uh, legal issues. Uh, and what was this question? Yeah, airport authorities okay. or something like that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. But the, uh, uh, illegal, uh, this happening is everywhere, that's true. Okay, so it was like the hmm. question was illegal fish transport due to inability of airport authority to identify actual status like layer or endangered. Yes, so exactly. that, that is exactly. Legal that you have covered. So we go to the next question. So again, there are sometimes the fishes, uh, some fishes are not banned in the, uh, I mean, uh, transportation or commercial marketization, but because of the uh, rare information or less information, uh -huh. sometimes the fishermen encountered with the policemen just because they looked so totally bizarre or different in shape. So they face some problem as well. So again, okay. because we are very much uh, uh, less concerned with the fish identifications. Okay. So this is another question. Yeah. Gaur uh -huh. Gaurav has asked, why fishes are still lacking legal protection, uh -huh. especially native fishes, which are getting endangered due to ongoing water pollution. We do have some regulation on fish practice in uh -huh. some protocols, say, protected areas. But once fishes are in the market, there is no one to look after what is being sold. Mm, well, girl, so, thank you for your question. But uh, as I huh, say, please. No, 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 please go ahead. I just wanted to your feedback. Yeah, always there is a rules and regulations in case of fishes as well. But and the same thing I'm uh, uh, again mentioned that had been a majestic large animal like a rhino or a tiger or an elephant, their translocation, their uh, movement. Uh, is a well regulated in comparison to lower strata animals right we always give a very uh, poor light on the lower strata animals so i would like to mention it, it's apathy not a governmental sector in general so jatada i want to cite an example you had a program at big bazaar uh, on the um, uh, on awareness of amphibians right can you remember it is a 4 5 yes, years back right yes i remember Yes. Uh, so at that time, uh, at that time in my, um, uh, I mean, uh, enclave, 
in my building, there was a person, uh, was a friend to me. He's an ele electronics engineer, right? And uh, he's a, prof uh, I mean, professor in one college. So I asked him, will you like to join to me to Big Bazaar? There is a program on amphibian conservation. So he laughed at me and said, Ki, are mendak ka conservation. So you believe fish is a little bit lower than the amphibian. So what would be the plight of fishes? So we have a general apathy to fishes, right? So the plight of the fishes is much more uh, bad than worse than the amphibians. So in that case, we have a regulations, we have rules. So when we are not concerned, so the expectation of it is being regulated is a little bit difficult. Yes, common cup is uh, culturing without following all the norms, but it's going on. That's true. So Debayon says, what are the catfishes and eel found in Northeast India? It would be very big list, I think. Yeah, it would be big list. Eel, eel fishes, I have mentioned, Anguilla bengalensis, Pizodonophis hmm. boro. Then uh, ill like ill, Ill like fishes like Monopterus cuchia, then your uh, uh, what is a master similar armatus that you um, said about bummy fish, then uh, Macrognathus aral, Tora, and Turi fish. And what else he asked? Uh, one is ill shaped cat... fish, and another one catfishes. Okay, we have all the big catfishes and the smaller catfishes as well. Big catfishes, the Walego or two in Asmis, we say uh, Boralimas. Then Arimas, mm -hmm. Singhala species. Then we have the biggest uh, fish of uh, our region, that is the Bagarius, Bagarius fishes. I had a pictures of Bagarius fishes, if I'm not wrong, it's a Bagarius or something else. Yeah, uh, I mean, that uh, Bagarius fish is there, Bagarius, 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 Yerali. These are the big, big catfishes found in this region. What is Bagarius? If, if you can share again, uh, it's called Gorua Mas or something. It's a different name again, I'll show. If it is there, let me see. Um, if I'm not wrong, it's a big area. Oh, where it is. Can you see the screen? Huge. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge. Maximum size, again, I forgot. Sorry for that. But it's a huge fish. Yes. It's a big area. It's the one which it is Chinese Magur or Japanese Magur. Magur, there's a stories with Magur again. Uh, Magur, the Magur we are having uh, nowadays. So most of the Magurs are the uh, hybrids. I'm not saying those are captive hybrids. Many are the natural hybrids as well. Because okay. um, uh, this uh, uh, Clarius caripinus that we commonly call as a Thai Magur, again, that is a very, I mean, um, uh, uh, rapid breeder and it invades the natural water system. So, in okay. the natural water system, we have lots of these uh, exotic species and that uh, uh, the hybrids we are getting. So, very interestingly, Rajiv sir, Rajiv, uh, sir has a uh, write up with the uh, title called Taxonomy Matters, where he mentioned about this Magur. Since, which, which uh, since long, we call it as a uh, Clarius Batrakas. Uh, Rajiv, uh, sir, from Kerala. OK, OK, OK. OK, he has a write-up on Taxonomy Matters. So where he mentioned about this Magur fish. So interestingly, and uh, the Magur fish we are having in Assam, maybe this oh. is the last place of this indigenous genetic structure gene pool of that okay. species we are losing even uh, till bengal we are losing the original gene pool of the mango fish okay that's a great point that we really need to know so there is uh, mm. one more question uh, shama parveen asked mm. sir can you share some point of rup chada about mm. spawning process so that is i think spawning would be a big process and we there is time will be a constraint but if uh -huh. Shami wants to take share some points on the uh, spawning process, uh, that uh, culturing of this fish, um, my personal knowledge is not there. So it's a totally different issue. Okay. I mean, culturing of a particular species. Many people are doing that, I know, in the Assam, Bengal, and Bangladesh. The Rup Chanda is going, culture is going on. Is That's Chana much information uh, at point of time I can give. Is Chana Barka threatened due to pet trade? Can you talk a bit about its ecology? 
well uh, about channa barka channa barka channa barka uh, few years back uh, there is a information that uh, channa uh, the fishermen were confiscated with the channa barka but at that time uh, um, uh, through a query that uh, is the channa barka is protected but i mean it is it cannot be trade or something like that as per my information is that it is not in certain kind of schedules so by official route it can it be done uh then why but the policeman confiscated or is there any such legal issues with that because this fish is very peculiar and very rare so we really see this fish so when we uh, we see something out of the track so it brings some doubts to our minds so at that time the info, the reply i uh, came to know that that fisherman actually collected that fish from a uh, uh, inside the national park I, if i'm not wrong from uh, orang national park or something like that or nearby areas uh, where the uh, uh, fishing is not uh, legalized that's why they were confiscated not because of the channa barka not okay. because of the species so so now there is one question here it says in northeast india what is the important area or site in fishery science to do research what are the important areas or sites yeah is it, it's your backyard i would say your backyard is the best place uh, mm -hmm. i have a great problem with the museum specimens when i show them to my students that this is a labia rohita preserved in a formalin losing all its color <laughs> when i am having all these fishes uh, in my backyard if i go and see it in every morning and evening why i need to show them in a museum specimens with the rare specimen that's fine so generally i took my uh, i uh, used to take my students to uh, to uh, market survey and uh, the, we have uh, i think in northeast india assam is having the highest number of wetlands and marshy areas paddy fields mm -hmm. so those are the places to uh, to have a hands on uh, act, uh, experiment uh, experiences with the fishes and uh, western I mean, western part of the uh, world his question is like sorry i'm not getting a voice i i think his question is uh, in which area uh, like ecology ecology breeding biology or molecular i think okay, that okay, is his okay. question okay and what are the important areas side in fishery science to do research work? okay fine yes um, uh, yeah sorry for that mm, mm, uh, see uh, we do molecular biology i am i do molecular biology dna biocoding of fish but yeah. without having the classical knowledge of fishes the molecular biology will be misleading because mm. with habitats with the different life stages of time fishes differ so first thing uh, i do believe that we should have a very good platform of classical zoology with fishes mm. then only we can move forward for the uh, uh, fish uh, uh, bi biotechnology and molecular biology or even in fish microbiology where we can see the microbes present in the gut of the fishes so that we can add those in the probiotics in the preparation of the artificial food so there are many uh, uh, modern fields in doing fishery um, research but before we should have a very good classical knowledge of uh, fish morphology and conventional taxonomy okay so uh, shamim we have almost taken all the questions and we already because we i knew as expected we have run over the time so it is already we have extended mm -hmm. it to almost 20 minutes extension we are going so some shamim thank you so much for your okay. time that you've given us and uh, it was i must say that it thank was you very so much thank you so much so i must say that it was very informative for me at uh, as to say because I, I knew that much of fishers that fishers know of me. So it's a very limited mutual knowledge. So uh, I hope... Even I got many information from you. <laughs> so, so yeah. So uh -huh. on field knowledge, yes. So, uh, so I hmm. hope uh, next time when I call you, I'll be discussing with you uh, the uh, different type of curries that we can prepare from fish. That can be... Without that, the whole I'll journey... I'll be happy for that because the whole journey of fish is incomplete so thank you shami once again and thank you all i'm more than you. happy yeah, yeah. thank so you thank indeed. you all of thank you for having thank me thank you so much yeah thank you so much and thank you all of thank you, you and stay safe uh, all of you that is the main purpose of the program to stay uh, and home. Uh, stay safe stay safe. Uh, yeah so uh, thank you shami and safe. thank you all of you for 
of your time uh, we shall meet again with someone else so if lockdown extends we'll have flooding of guests and we have lots of people to talk about so anyone who is listening to me and if you few think that you can also talk on certain topic please let me know and we can have a, a group discussion rather than one to one uh, discussion thank you so much and stay home stay safe thank you thank you